guys, how are we doing? It's Martin Cliff here, and I've been asked to do this video a couple of times recently, um, which is a look at uh, my current pedal board setup. Um, so here it is. Uh, thanks to those of you who've commented on my videos and asked me for it. Um, the reason I haven't, I've been putting it off a bit and haven't done one is because I didn't actually have it finished until pretty recently. Uh, and in fact, it's still not just in the sense that I need to tidy up some of the power cabling. Um, but other than that, everything now is, is on the board. So I thought I'd have a quick run through um, how it works. It's a split system in the sense that um, the front row of pedals go in front of the amp um, and the back row of pedals are in the effects loop, but not perhaps in the most obvious order. Um, so the guitar comes in. Let me turn everything off to give a nice dry sound. Okay, so the only pedal that's on at the moment is the one that you can't see, uh, which is underneath there is an MXR Smart Gate pedal. Um, not underneath because I'm embarrassed about it or ashamed to use MXR pedals, far from it. My baseboard, which I'll be doing in a video about in a few days time, is nearly all MXR. Um, it's simply underneath uh, because I never need to turn it on and off and it wouldn't fit on top. Um, so there we go, never need to adjust it, it just stays as is and does its job. So the raw signal that I've got um, is... <laughs> And all the gate is doing is getting rid of any extra noise that you may um, get otherwise, um, which you won't get very much of, particularly on a clean sound, but it's just there. So the guitar comes in to the first pedal on the bottom right, which is this three leaf audio Proton, which is an envelope filter. Um, originally I think I bought it for bass, but it sounded really cool on guitar, so there we go. And it's set to kind of give a nice quacky sound, very Mutron-esque, uh, very um, Jerry Garcia kind of style. And the cool thing about an envelope filter is they're very responsive to picking dynamics. If I turn the volume down even just slightly, it doesn't really open at all. But the harder I pick, the more sort of quacky tone I get um, and then if I stick it on the bridge humbucker then it gets most nearly every note and that gives me that kind of half cocked wah sound um, and then you play chords with it it's very much um, obviously you're getting more output so Now at this point, um, yeah, let's turn that off and go to the dual mode pedal, which is the, the Sir Rufus. Most of my pedals are Sir pedals. I'm saying my guitar is a Sir guitar. Not for any reason, like because they give me money, although if you want to, that'd be really nice, guys. Um, but just because they make really good pedals and good guitars and good amps, which I would love one of. Um, but I'm quite happy with my Ignator for the time being. So the Sir Rufus is a fuzz pedal. And at the moment it's in red mode, um, which means full on. <laughs> on its own, it has a bit of a kind of overdrive feel to it. I've only got the fuzz halfway up, um, just because that's how I like it. Um, it's very responsive to the guitar volume. <laughs> So I turned it, what, from 10 to about 9 there, and it goes from... <laughs> so kind of full on to kind of uh, muted in the sense of dulled kind of uh, sound. And then it's a dual mode pedal, so if I hold it down for a second, the light turns green, and I get... Uh... <laughs> This is even more responsive to the um, volume control, so I get a kind of lo-fi treble sound. So if I 
I use kind of my, my go-to, which is the in-between positions, then I get very much a... <laughs> Now I have lots of buzz pedals, I have four or five, um, I like this one, not only for the dual mode, because occasionally, more often than not, I'll leave it in the green mode, but it does vary. Um, I like that I don't have to run it all the way up, um, so it's not as noisy, um, but I also like uh, I also I like that I can run it after the uh, Proton, it doesn't matter that it's behind a buffer, although it does respond differently, certainly. Um, but it also meshes really nicely with, with the overdrive pedal, so... If I turn on my low gain Shiba drive, which is the black one, further down the chain. And then I roll down the volume. get really trebly. Let's go. So it takes a essentially a fairly mellow sound. Let's say guitar on nine. Um fuzz off. Turn on the fuzz. Very thin. Um, slightly weedy, but certainly um, useful sound. And then just twist the guitar volume slightly, and I've got... So that's the pedal that I, I really like. Um, though it's a little frustrating in some ways, but uh, mostly the reason, the, the thing I dislike about it is just that it doesn't turn on until you release the foot switch, whereas everything else turns on when you press the foot switch, which is slightly strange, but I've got used to it. Not a pedal I use a huge amount, but it has a couple of useful versatile features that I like. Next in the chain is is the Sir Riot, um, which, which is my distortion sound, uh, generally for. <laughs> sounding a little strange to me basically because i usually have the compressor on nearly all the time um but i'm just running through the state that these pedals one at a time so there's the riot the first shiba drive is a kind of high gain um overdrive well i say high, it's higher gain than the other one it's quite a medium gain <laughs> Shiba then is, is very much <laughs> drive really low uh, level boost more um, basically gives me more sustain in combination with the Koji comp and I can double them up um, then we have the Jarabit which is a tremolo <laughs> it's set to a very fast time uh, if you hold in down the foot switch, you can get to a tap tempo mode. So let's go for. And I crank up the depth. And if I actually turn it to maybe a square wave or something, I can get some quite interesting tones. So, so that's quite a fun pedal, just, just what I use for various textures. 
Um, then the signal actually goes away from the from the top um, into the noise gate because I wanted the noise gate before the compressor so that its compressor is not raising the noise floor too much. Uh, it's taking away the noise from any of the dirt pedals. Then we come to the compressor, um, which on its own just evens things out. Helps to make the, the jet rabbit a bit more subtle. As opposed to... Just kind of eases it off a bit. Um, less noticeable on that sound than perhaps on others. Um, and the higher, I, harder I drive the front end of the Jet Rabbit, the the more, the less effect it has uh, with when the compressor's on. Um, but then the reason the comp, comp there is then so that I put the overdrive on. And it just kind of gives me a, a texture that I really like, just slightly bitey. But cleans up, adds a bit of brightness to it, which is always good. And then when I stack pedals, um, it doesn't then give me massive increases in level. <laughs> So that's always fun. So that brings us again, that's the front end of, of the system. So um, they all go into the front of the amplifier. And then the back row is in the effects loop of the amplifier. Um, which I probably don't need to do considering I use the amp clean, but it just, it does help in, in certain ways. It just helps to give it, um, you know, keep things clean. So if the amp gets adjusted or a tube goes dirty or whatever, I still won't have to mess around or if I decide to run the amp with more gain um, I don't have to then start repatching or anything like that um, so the signal actually comes in first to the ISO boost um, the sur boost pedal which is set up just for a straight level boost so if I go from so it's definitely definitely makes it louder it's not a massive amount louder it's just enough to, to stand up uh, above um, a mix really um, so something you'd use for solos uh, if your rhythm sound isn't loud enough then you've got something wrong um, so that that's the first thing why is it in the loop rather than the front end because if it was in the front end it would drive the front of the amp harder which would cause more clipping more internal compression Whereas if you stick it in the loop, it actually just increases the level, which is what I want it for. The Iso Boost has the advantage as well that it's um, isolated, which does mean that if instead of going in a loop situation, I was feeding the effects end into a different amplifier, or even to two amplifiers, say I wanted to go stereo with my um, my effects, uh, then I could do that. And if there was a ground loop, the little switch on it, I, I could isolate them, which is cool. Um, the signal then feeds into the Strymon timeline delay, which is just a whole bag of tricks. Um, in the thing at the beginning, I generally I used just a kind of mellow. quite often it's got so many different sounds on here uh, I use the reverse for leads quite a lot which just kind of gives it a bit of movement um, but without getting in the way of, of the sound um, then if I was to bank up I have it's kind of a nice one that adds this octave sound and this bit um, crusher kind of sound which makes the uh, delays ever more distorted no. 
So that again has its uses, that's, that's a much bigger delay sound. Um, then I have just a generic kind of U2 style. <laughs> Get a double delay going on there, and a much bigger version of the same thing. And the final bang that I've actually got stuff programmed in has the same reverse delay, just with a slight boost to it. And kind of somewhere a very subtle pound. That's really all I've got so far because that's all the delays I would use in, in general day to day playing. If I want a special effect for recording, I'll just go in and tweak. Um, it's easier than trying to create presets for all those. And that's all running in mono at the moment um, just because I've only got the one amp set up. Uh, I could easily run it in, in stereo. That then feeds into the Strymon Big Sky um, reverb, which Again, I have a couple of banks that I use. There's the, my just very subtle. Then there's a bigger one. And then there's an even bigger kind of chorus one. It's not a long one, but it's it's got much more kind of thickness to the sound. And if I bank up, just a reverb tank. Swells. things to play with. The shimmer one is, is actually quite fun. If I use that in combination with that, um, where was it? It was bank one, patch one, the delay that does the ice as well. That gives me really kind of spooky, spacious kind of stuff, which is good fun to play around with and good for textures for recording. So, particularly if I don't have any keyboards. <laughs> was basically to make the wiring the cables back to the amp more easy um, is the Ditto X2 looper from TC Electronic um, and that's very simple again it's all set up in mono other it's all wired with lava cable which is really good this is a pedal train 2 um, with the pedal board riser thing on the top just in the middle to bring these two pedals up to make them easier to hit with my feet um, it's actually just powered with a pedal power 2 plus which is um, kind of getting near its limit in terms of current output, but it all works, so it's all good, and it's not getting hot. Um, it just gets kind of a little bit warm on occasion, but it's all good. So the um, the looper means that I can then just create beds um, to to play over. Really useful uh, live, and particularly for practicing and when you're coming up with ideas. So if I was to do something similar to what I was doing then with these swells, so I could, let me go. One, two, three, four.
back and then solo over that quite easily. <laughs> questions please ask um, so it's all lava cables pedal train video lab uh, Amazon noise gate in there smart gate a couple of strymons a whole lot of sur pedals um, yeah I'm very happy with it I don't see me changing this board anytime soon okay I'm gonna play out over this so until next time take care and I'll see you soon <laughs>